Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Astral Chain. We have finally located Douglas, and it's time to bring him out of the astral Are you plane. Okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. No external injuries. Looks like his corruption levels are safe, too. All right, let's get him back to the Ark. I'm really glad he's alive, because if he had died, the world would have been... Douglas. <laughs> I will keep committing joke crimes, and nobody can stop me. Fuck the police. <laughs> I, I don't understand. What the hell went on? <sighs> I mean, I know it's still experimental, but but it was supposed to help people. That's that's what he said. Wait, my my, my case. Where, where's my case? Where is it? here for 20 years and this drug gave us the claws to fight back but now we'll really show those bastards in central city a thing or two i was afraid we'd hit the end of the line but now we know there's something even stronger and you brought it right to us that uh, legion is it hand it over So now, red shifting humans are actually a threat. With this development, the backfire of the blue evolve, which is more like a pink purple, and they wasted a lot of it. Every file they drop immediately had a bunch leaking out. That's just wasteful. You can't just go wasting your good drugs like that. Or at least what you think is your good drugs. That was uh, not good. That was Bush League shit. <laughs> Oh, and never has comeuppance been more immediate than Kyle betraying you and trying to steal your Legion uh, to getting punked. I think actually Kyle's voice actor overperforms the role because everything else about the character makes me think he's supposed to be a huge chump who just gets played all the time. But his voice acting makes him sound like he kind of has a handle on things. Like, it's pure, unearned confidence. Quick. Look, a security camera. Check it out. They probably saw Douglas. So we had that huge fight, uh, and in the midst of it, Douglas has run away again, so we will have to relearn how to Douglas. Uh, except in this case, we just have holograms and a more or less linear pathway. Their backs. What are you? Who are you? 
Leave Douglas to us. I'll see you around, Kyle. Yeah, clearly, Kyle, you don't know how to Douglas like we do. Oh, we could have used this in the midst of that big, uh, crowded fight. And that actually would have hit multiple, but just neglected to bring that out. <laughs> no special reason for it or anything. Uh, so before we pursue Douglas again, we're going to do something really cool and optional. It's a little bit out of the way. It's, I would hesitate to call it a secret, even though I haven't seen the most documentation on this boss fight. So a lot of people are clearly missing it, which is a shame because it's a pretty cool fight. It's unique. Uh, and the way you get to it, while a little bit obscured, really rewards uh, the exploration you've been doing. Stuff like this I find to be really important in any game where exploration is an option, or even what the devs want you to do. Because if the payoff is shitty too often, you might be discouraged from looking around. And this is a great, great, great payoff. An entirely unique boss fight that's just a little out of the way and requires a little uh, knowledge of how the mechanics work. So it starts off this nifty dual fight. Looks like we're gonna focus down uh, Capanius. And there's some cool mythology appropriate theming to this fight too. Capanius was a warrior who was so arrogant that at the Battle of Thebes, he declared that Zeus himself couldn't stop him from taking the city. And in response, Zeus was like, nope, and murdered him with a bolt of lightning. Uh, just like the lightning from the storm enveloping us in the arena from this cool big set piece moment, this big typhoon, the tempest that we're in. There's lightning strikes going on all around us, and the way they work is actually reminiscent of Gale in uh, in Dark Souls 3, where you get plenty of warning on the spot that lightning is about to strike. So as long as you're as long as you have presence of mind, you can avoid it. It's just this cool dramatic environmental effect. And this, th there's so much drama in the environment uh, at this point in, in Chapter 6, in File 6. Goddamn, we got caught. Actually, need to heal for a second. Luckily, the Arm Legion was doing a good job distracting him. This is basically Super Ornstein, by the way. <laughs> uh, with a big old chest laser, got an Iron Man Proton Cannon, that he can bust it out. I think this... Nope, that's a different cue. He's not doing it as much as I've seen him do it in the past. Uh, so Astraeus also had some ties to the storm. Uh, he was the god of dusk and married to Aeus, uh, also known as Aurora, goddess of dawn, and many of their kids govern the winds and storms like Zephyrus and Boreas. That's how we get uh, the north and, and south lights. Or the, uh, the northern and southern lights. Uh, Aurora Borealis and Aurora Astralis. Oh, god damn it, that always clips me. And it does an incredible amount of damage. That's what I've been trying to look out for. It'll also one-shot whatever legion it hits, usually. They don't tend to have the stamina to survive that very well. Looks like we're coming up on the end, though. God, what a cool fight! And you get so much of these, like, so many of these gale force wind effects going too, uh, cross hatching with the, uh, with the streaks of rain. It's great. It's just strong environmental drama. Ooh! Thought he was dead. There we go. Oh, speaking of Zeus and Storms, uh, the word Typhoon is rooted in Typhon, uh, or Typhos. I mentioned Typhus, right? Shit, did I among... I know I said Zephyrus, because Zephyr is one of my favorite words. Bore No, I didn't. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Typhoon is rooted in, uh, Typhus, or Typhon. 
and Typhon was like this deific Greek giant serpent who fought and was killed by Zeus. And you know who Typhos was the child of? Gaia and Tartarus. And we just fought Tartarus right before exiting the astral plane. So we go straight from the Tartarus fight into this maelstrom of a storm. This whole chapter gets so strong, and it it's uh, it, it's an uptick in the action and and just how cool the rest of the game is. Like I would say that this is um, that dramatic transition from Act Two into the beginning of Act Three, where everything is ramped up, everything is ratcheted up. And from here on out, oh, ho, ho, ho. we have so much good stuff. Except we did get punked into garbage by the weakest possible enemies, aside from the occasional regular human we fight. Unarmed, mostly regular humans, unarmored. And if you listen, you can actually hear a uh, kitten purring, which means we're pretty close to this chapter's rescuable cat. Uh, and I don't want to forget them. I want to save them from the storm. Oh, we're not going to get into it just yet. Because holy shit. Don't tell me Blue Evolve caused all this. I'm going to bring out the Arm Legion. I know the cat's not under here, but I think there might be some items. Yep. And there's one on the ledge above that I cannot get to. Oh, the kitten didn't run. Okay, good. This cat doesn't run. Say hello to Danny. I just felt compelled to get the kitten. The music in this part is really, really sick. It's picked up in intensity quite a bit as well. And you can hear mixed in uh, with all the electronica uh, and the, the electric guitars. This really, really cutting um, uh, uh, string line. Or at least until the combat music uh, kind of changed gears. But there are, like, there are usually uh, three genres in Astral Chain that uh, primarily feature in the game. It tends to use them in this like fluid fusion. And it's... I don't know how that was be. Then again... Not really much of an opportunity to do much in that fight. Uh, it's metal, electronica, and uh, orchestral. We really don't need the iris at any point for throughout the rest of this mission. Do have to watch this though. Oh, that's neat when they start fusing the astral plane uh, and the real world together. Or not the real world, but whatever we're calling flesh zone. <laughs> Um, yeah, electronica, metal, and orchestral. And then each of those genres is paired with, like, a specific mood that Platinum wanted to achieve, uh, for every section of a level. So you could also say that as far as mood or tone goes, uh, this game has three main moods. Is this calm or cool mood, which, yeah, it frays a little there. And then dramatic intense. The first is a little wishy-washy, but in practice you can see how well that works out. Uh, so the electronic stuff represents the spectrum of calm or cool moments. Metal kicks in when they need to ramp up tension, and then the big dramatic story beats uh, get a more emphatic orchestral layer. And they're layering all of these things together in a fluid fashion as the situation ramps up, as things change, as the mood shifts. Really very cool. And then we're just going to cross over here and on to... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! 
of this makes sense. I, I bet my life it has something to do with Douglas. We've got to find him. I say his strings kick in again. And they use such vivid colors, too. Oh, hey, Dianides finally came back. It's been a minute since we've seen him. That felt like I needed two rafts to achieve that. <laughs> Either way, I'll be fine. Oh, this time, can we not get his health bar? Because we're fighting him for the second time as like a mini boss instead of a proper boss or something? Or a regular enemy uh, made out of a mini boss? Oh! I don't think I did what I wanted to do there. I think I had to be a little bit more on the money with being in midair to get over that sweep. Pretty sure that first one did damage. Because I landed on it. Oh, God. I'm going to get that down. It's such a fun way to punish enemy sweeps. And you can get airborne pretty reliably uh, with certain sync attacks and certain command attacks. Yeah, I understand why that was an A. Well deserved. Either way, this chapter's been going pretty damn well. Ah, oh, man. The fact that it's, like, reactive and emergent is so cool. So I am going to dodge roll out of the way to use my iframes <laughs> so that I can't get knocked to the ground by these people running down the hallway because they will make you stumble for a long time if they come even close to grazing you. Not today, Satan. I love that. It's so cheeky. And rude. Oh no, please go away. <laughs> you better turn on your iris so you can see better. Again, just like the last time he told us to turn the iris on, we don't need it. It's no darker than like a reasonably lit horror game level. Things are very visible. We're too late. He's not breathing. Oh no. I guess that'd be his gun then. I don't see any signs of a struggle. Check his pockets. Maybe he left a note. Oh no, it looks like the world is Douglas now. That's a pass key for the Zone 09 gate. Wait. Douglas worked for the ARI? Take a look around the room. There may be something else we should see. Iris, startup. Iris, shut down. Looks like all these vials are empty. That means someone must have. There was a security camera outside this room, right? Maybe it can answer a few questions for us. It's... Uh, it does not matter how poor the resolution is. You are detectives. Look. Someone left the room with a case. Someone? Oh, for sure. Douglas showed up right as they were leaving. But he didn't even try to get the case back. And then, once Douglas was alone, he... Iris, shut down. I deeply, deeply hate that they don't recognize... Recognize a very distinct case. silhouette. Let's check it out. These stupid, dense fools. It's so, so frustrating. <laughs> Go home. Commander 
his orders. What the hell are you doing in here anyway? You don't really got something to do with all this shit. All right, fine. Have it your way. We'll get to you once we're done with all these. All right, Sarah, take him down. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I get it. We can't just sit back and watch. But we're in real trouble now. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. I'm picking up a lot of energy nearby. It's coming towards us. Up there. Look out. So that part of the fight is really just fodder to build your ranking up. Because there's a lot of ways to fuck this fight up. Listen to the piano kick in! What a strong choice! So Homunculus Beta is quite an alright fight. Uh, there's a lot of options here and a lot of things that you aren't told outright. You can just intuit from your knowledge of the rest of the game or just experiment with. And sometimes you'll just fluke your way into finding stuff. That's how when I first fought Homunculus Beta on my own, I realized you could wrap each of its limbs up. You can do one at a time. And in doing so, you will eventually get every limb and stun him for a long time. He already goes down for a second and becomes way, way less mobile the first time you wrap any of his limbs up. But when you bind all four, he just gets totally immobilized for a hot second. The only thing about it is, if you treat this like a Souls enemy, or a Souls boss, especially a large one, like the Quadrupeds, you'll realize something, and that it's, he is a Souls boss, and that means if you're just under his legs, he cannot do shit. Which is a lot of the first half of this fight, uh, as you're figuring the legs out, or how to stun him and get him that low. Then we hit this phase, which is actually pretty cool, but introduces some problems. The camera is not good here. It's not good if you lock on, but even if you don't lock on, the game still wants to track him pretty hard. Uh, luckily, that phase doesn't last super long. <laughs> And this special action for the Arm Legion is going to shave a huge chunk of that health bar off and put us into the final fight, or the final phase of the fight. Uh, and there is a gimmick here that makes this final phase much less of a headache, because normally you do it by whittling him down with the Arrow Legion and gunshots, and the camera is the worst that it ever gets in the whole game at that point. Uh, there are 10, 15 second windows where you just can't see your character at all. Because it's just at such a ridiculously bad angle to the ground. Uh, trying to track this flailing, uh, charging, huge monster. And that is how you do that phase the easy way. And the stylish way, to be honest. That's a pretty cool animation. Um, yeah, the visual indicator up till now is that red line preceding a charge. But this one, it's running all over the walls at points, firing projectiles and then trampling you without the visual cue. So you're just supposed to intuit that you can do that. And it rewards you for trying, which is cool.
A black legion. That's certainly new. The lengths you'll go to stop me, Yosef. Expect a warm welcome when we get back. You know, I've been known to play a Clover game or a Little Devils or Platinum game from time to time. And that's that's feeling an awful lot like a cool rival character get up, huh? And now Akira has his Legion back? But it's some kind of special legion that mirrors our own, but it's way cooler in some mysterious way. Hmm. Thanks you <laughs> thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.